Hey, alumni friends, it's time to get fired up for another NHEC alumni coffee break. Hey, it's Troy, the alumni guy, and I have got a real treat. I've uh, really enjoyed talking to Mr. Terry Parks here off camera ahead of our, of our interview here. Terry, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good and to be here. I, I, absolutely. And I want to celebrate some just amazing things about your career, Terry. But, you know, first and foremost, you're a city councilman for Brooklyn Park and have been for six years. But what a storied career, my friend, you have had. Goodness, 32 years in the well, Brooklyn yeah. Park in Minneapolis Fire Department. Yeah, and that, that story wouldn't have been complete without North Hennepin, because that, that, was, that was a big part of it, too. Yeah, I spent uh, 40 years in the fire service. Actually, the last 18 was in the private side, because I was doing investigations, because I was just too old and too, too chubby to, to crawl in burning buildings anymore. So, <laughs> so, so I went over to the private side. <laughs> well, but you've got great energy and a youthful attitude, Terry, and I think it's that's incredibly impressive. And, you know, you started your degree really as a non-traditional student and a veteran coming home from the Vietnam conflict. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so so when I was growing up, I, uh, I graduated from Minneapolis South. Our family didn't have a lot of money. And uh, we didn't have any money for college. And I just didn't want to stay on the welfare and didn't want to stay in the city and do nothing. So um, I actually volunteered in 1972 to, to go to Vietnam. And then I turned 18 while I was in the military. So I did, uh, I did three and a half years there and came home. I actually was, when I got out, because I, I, I promised if, if God would get me out of the situation I volunteered for, <laughs> that I would, be, I, I, would, I would be a minister. So... I went to, I actually went to seminary for a little bit and, and I don't think God wanted me in his pulpit. <laughs> he, he said, he said, serve my people, but not that way. So, so. Wow. Well, thank you, Terry, for your yeah. service. I am always wowed by any, any service people uh, yeah. in the field giving their all for their country. And I mean, and you have been an incredible public servant. I mean, even though you didn't end up uh, following uh, into the ministry, yep. um, you've done um, so much good for so many people I know in all of the different capacities, which is really a, a fantastic lead in, right? The city of Brooklyn Park right now, you're in your sixth year as a city councilman. Tell us a little bit about how the city's been doing lately. Yeah, the city's doing. I mean, we we've uh, we've done really well um, as far as maintaining the budget and and getting things. We've got we had a lot of land um, to build on. So right now, I think we got about twelve percent of our land left to build on, and uh, we've started a, a strong partnership with North Hennepin in that we want to get that art center put up over on Eighty Fifth and uh, and what is that Broadway. Yeah. And then and then we purchase some land from North Hennepin so that we can build some housing uh, just just east of that. So we're doing good. Um, the city, of course, is, has been affected, you know, as well with this uh, with the, the murder of George Floyd. So we just want to make sure our residents are doing well. Um, we've, we're going to have some town talks in each district. Uh, we've had some meetings with some uh, community leaders and we just want to make sure that our residents are have have a voice in, in what they want to say. And, you know, there's been some talk about police reform. So we're going through uh, police reform, uh, not reform, but we're going through their policies and procedures just to make sure that we're on the right foot. And and I'm, I'm assured that our police department is, is ahead of the game. So uh, we just right now, the, the, the main focus is just making sure our residents are safe and that uh, that they're heard. So Absolutely. And the campus is incredibly proud of our partnership with Brooklyn Park. Like you said, I've been with the campus 13 years and have interacted with so many Brooklyn Park city leaders uh, over the years. And I am always wowed and impressed. This is the first time you and I have gotten to speak, but yes. I've heard many, many kind things and, and great uh, uh, updates and things on, on your work, Terry, with the city. So I thank you also for that. Yeah, yeah. And, it just, and it just amazes me that when we get a president with North Hennepin, you know, and a fantastic president, and they move on, and we're thinking, oh, there's no way we can replace them, and then we come and replace them with one that's just as good and just as enthusiastic about working with us. So it's it's we've we you've had some we've had some great presidents over the year at North Hennepin. So 
Absolutely. And yes, we're excited to welcome Dr. Rolando Garcia. He started on July 1. So another uh, fantastic president in place. And we're looking forward to uh, our work with him as well. Yeah. And off camera, Terry, we were joking about one of my questions really resonated with you. Yeah. What would you tell your 18 year old self? And <laughs> you had me laughing with that response. Well, my 18 year old self, I turned 18 when I was in the military. So my 18 year old self would have said, uh, what are you doing? You don't belong here and you shouldn't have volunteered for this. So, <laughs> so that's what my 18 year old self would have said. So, oh, God. yeah, I, I mean, I was, I was young. I didn't know. I mean, I, Vietnam was going strong, not strong in 72, but it was still going. And I thought, well, I, I'll go try that because it doesn't look so bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so that's what I, that's what I would have told my 18 year old self. Absolutely. And, and yeah. thank you, Terry, again for your service. And you, you survived the conflict and you did such great good there and you came back and you raised a family. So maybe a shout out to uh, your wife. I understand you've got an anniversary coming up. Yeah, May will be 40 years. So like I, like I told you, I wouldn't live with me for 40 years. So she's, <laughs> she, she's strong willed and she's uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're just getting started. We're still in love, I think. So. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, we have just scratched the surface, Terry, of, of what I think would be several great interviews. And honestly, um, your update on the city was, was great and I think would be of great interest to our, our viewers here uh, on Facebook. Uh, maybe you'd come back and join me again someday. Sure, absolutely. I, I just want to, uh, you know, my North Hennepin, one of the questions was about memory of North Hennepin. Yeah. Um, I, so when I was in high school, I didn't, we had a choice back then to take math or science. And I took science because I hated math. It makes no sense to add two letters together and I get a number. It, it makes no sense to me. <laughs> but the math resource instructor, I don't know if it was a teacher, a student, I don't know what it was, but I had to go through the math resource every week to try to keep up to, so I could graduate from North Hennepin. Sure. Uh, and I felt that person's patience was amazing. And I, I, I don't have the name, but I, I, I put that poor guy through the ringer and <laughs> trying to, I said, that don't make sense. And he started all over again. So, so that was, that was one of my big memories of North Hennepin. But a couple of things I do want to say is that, you know, I waited till I was in my thirties to start North Hennepin. It took me about 10 years to get a two year degree because I didn't have time. I was doing other things, but yeah. <clears throat> one of the things that I do remember, and I, again, I don't remember the instructor, but told me something when I was in my thirties and I wrote it down and I've, I've, I've actually got it on my wall. It says, yeah. don't aspire to make a living, aspire to make a difference. Yes. And I, I've, I've been living by that ever since. I mean, it just makes so much sense. It's nice to go make a living and make some money. That's great. But yeah. if you can make a difference in somebody else's life, Yes, that's, that's, that's a lot more pay than your check's going to be on or what's going to be on your check. So isn't that the so, truth? Yeah. And I don't remember that instructor's name and I don't know where he got that saying, but it's right now it's, it's, it's on my wall in my office. So I love it. It reminds me a little bit of Howard Olson for folks that might know him. Sure. Uh, yeah, it could have been, I could see him being somebody that said that, but that's, yeah. that's wonderful. And you know, words to live by and it, it goes to show you, Terry, how, you know, inspired you can be by the people that you meet in your life and how instrumental they are to your journey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, if people, I mean, no matter what age you are, go back and get your degree. I mean, it just, if it's something, don't, don't go through life saying, I wish I would have, just, just do it. So that, that, you know, that's what I did. I waited late, but uh, I got it done. So. Well, if nothing, Terry, we got to get you back on the program here for all these pearls of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the only one I had. <laughs> yeah i doubt that <laughs> mr terry parks gosh what a pleasure thanks for joining us on the nhcc alumni coffee break very proud to be a, a member of that place thank you